Greetings travelers, and welcome to Azeroth. Today we are taking a peek into one of the newest areas discovered in the world of Warcraft. As many seasoned adventurers prepare to trek to the Shadowlands, newer recruits will find themselves stranded on the Exile's Reach, an island in the North Sea crawling with murlocs, quillbore, ogres, and more. And while you unravel and thwart the evil misdeeds being planned here, you may not notice the secrets and easter eggs hidden across the island. Honestly, the world designers at Blizzard Entertainment outdid themselves with this new zone. It is an excellent introduction to the world and features a lot of fun references for new players to find if you go off the beaten path and out of your way. So, today, let's take a look through the Exile's Reach and all the hidden secrets and environmental easter eggs that it holds. But before we get started, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, please consider leaving a like and subscribing for more. That is the single best thing you can do if you like content like this and want to see the channel grow. And if you want to go above and beyond, you can ring the bell so you make sure you're one of the first to watch all of the lore, easter egg, and documentary videos I have in the pipeline. But with all that out of the way, let's get started. The very first part of the island players will explore is a murloc hideaway on the southernmost coast. This is a village created from various goods and trinkets that the murlocs have scavenged from various shipwrecks on the island. There are a ton of cool little treasures and knickknacks hidden in this trove, ranging from tailoring supplies to a little toy robot, bottles of some sort of alcohol, and a ton more. Interestingly, you can find a few crates that have broken open to reveal meat. I point this out simply because of the texture work here. The meat closer to the salt in the crate is less spoiled than the rest. It's an incredible eye for detail. One murloc towards the beginning of this area can be found atop an altar made from various potions and spoons, all inside of a giant seashell alongside a full-body mirror. And if he has not been killed by another adventurer, you will find the murloc here dancing in front of the mirror. I love this, and I love him. Two more murlocs can be found dancing together at the opposite side of the camp to the left, getting down in front of a brazier. This is just so fun. Another can be found praising a pile of trinkets stacked upon a seashell, and three more can be seen near the top of the camp praising a flag in front of a giant shell and pearl. Finally, the placement of this one, if you notice, is just at the helm of this crashed ship. He's just acting out his best life, I love it. The detail in the placement here is just impeccable and it adds a ton of personality to the murlocs, and I wanted to point this all out before you mindlessly kill them or if they're dead from some other adventurer's hand. Just east of the Murloc hideaway, here on your map, you will find a skeleton clutching a jeweled necklace lying on a door ripped from a Kul Tiran ship. This is a clear reference to James Cameron's 1997 film Titanic, which saw the main character Rose survive the sinking of the ship by floating on a door in the frigid waters of the North Atlantic. In the film, she is also in possession of a large diamond necklace called the Heart of the Ocean. Also, while recording this, I just realized that Exile's Reach is in the North Sea, so that's kind of a cool little parallel since the Titanic sank in the North Atlantic. I don't even know if that was intentional, it was just a thought I had. Slightly east of Rose's skeleton, here on your map, you will find another skeleton, but this one has the bottom half of a large fish. Obviously, this is the corpse of a mermaid. Two seashells lay on its chest, and a fork is clutched in one of its hands. Additionally, a dead crab lays next to it, and a blue and yellow fish can be found swimming in the shallows right off the shore. All of this is collectively a reference to Disney's animated classic, The Little Mermaid, specifically the characters Ariel, Sebastian, and Flounder. The fork is referencing a scene where Ariel, having no knowledge of the surface world, believes the utensil to be a hair comb. Even further east along this coast, curving around the island, you will find more wreckage and debris gathered along the shore. Eventually, you will come across the remains of a pirate ship, with its hull broken open to reveal a pile of treasure. Unfortunately, none of this can be taken for our own purposes. Even further along, we will find yet another shipwreck, complete with a still-lit hooded lantern pointed towards the sea. But even, even further, almost off the map as you can see here, you will discover a sword, a shield, and a small sack resting against an outcropping of rocks. It is unclear exactly what this is supposed to be. Did Warrior leave these here with the intention to return? Or is this perhaps some sort of makeshift cairn or memorial? Either way, it's pretty cool. Let's circle back around and head back to the Murloc hideaway, and now head west instead, next to the abandoned camp. Here, on your map, you will see the remains of a beached ship. It's hard to miss, especially so close to one of the questing hubs. But if you take a look inside its hollowed out hull, you will find what appears to be the skeletons of two Zandalari treasure hunters. They have a crate with some gold in it, a map marked with strategic locations and passageways, and strangely a set of keys. 
It's unclear how exactly they met their fate. Perhaps they were killed in the shipwreck their bodies now rest in. Or perhaps they were chased here and slain by the nearby murlocs or quillbore. It's unknown. In the bay, just to the west of the treasure hunter corpses here, on your map, you will find a skeleton wearing a diving helmet. Sadly, its foot is trapped under a massive starfish amongst the wreckage of a ship. Perhaps they were excavating the wreck and were somehow caught under the starfish, slowly losing air and then drowning. Honestly, this is a pretty tragic easter egg and a horrible way to die. It is a personal nightmare of mine, let me tell you that. Let's head out of the water and just to the other side of the bay on the coastline that runs along the south of the island. Here you will find an Eden named Rokar. If you talk to Rokar, they will give you the option to be thrown back to the abandoned camp. This was surely put into the game as a sort of makeshift fast travel. The interest we have in Rokgar, though, is what he says when you approach him. Rokgar likes throw. No like fight. Only throw. The phrasing of the sentence may be a reference to the meme comic of the dog wanting to play fetch, but not wanting to give up the object being thrown. Further west, along this southern coast, the farther away from the abandoned camp you go, the more signs of civilization you will find. Debris from shipwrecks has gathered along the shore, papers and documents and broken barrels, but also wooden poles carved into pikes. Eventually, around here, on your map, you will find a hill that you can climb, but if you take a closer look at the foliage here, you will see viscera hidden among the vines, and a feather beside a ribcage in the brush further up. At the hill's first summit, you will come across a small work area, marked by a dagger driven into a wooden pike, a bulging waterskin hanging from its handle. A backpack with a sleeping roll lays next to a pile of uncut wood, and an axe rests atop a pile of these pikes, seemingly melted into the rock. Hey, this was recorded on the PTR, so we'll cut them some slack. Even further up the hill, you will find the remains of a small camp, its fire still lit. An undamaged rowboat has been dragged up the hill and rests here outside of a tent. More bones and viscera are littered across the ground here, and a sword and a bottle lay strewn about some hay on the ground nearby. Inside the tent, our favorite low-quality textured map can be seen next to a quill and inkwell, with a candle still lit to illuminate the parchment. If I'm reading this situation right, either whomever owns this camp killed some sort of big game recently and was quite messy in their butchery of it, or some sort of struggle happened here and it did not go well for some party involved. If I were to speculate, perhaps this was the camp of a member of either the Alliance or Horde expedition to the island that was captured by the ogres of the island's cult. Either way, this is such a cool detail hidden far out of sight from anyone just playing the zone's main story. Seriously, there is no reason for you to go this far out of your way. I almost got lost a couple times looking for this, actually. Also, quickly before we leave this area, just south of this camp along the shore, there seems to be some sort of magma vent or something? At the very least, there's some heat bursting out of solid rock, and it's very strange. Again, this is the PTR, I expect this was not intended, but it has now been documented forever. Sorry, not sorry, Blizzard Entertainment. Let's head back in the direction of the abandoned camp. On an island just to the south of Exile's Reach, here, on your map, you'll find a makeshift living space on the beach, made from the remains of a rowboat balanced on its side. There's no sign of the boat's owner other than a pile of partially eaten fish, an unlit lantern, and a crude fishhook weapon. Even further south on this same island, you will see what appears to be another murloc camp, perhaps suggesting the makeshift boat tent was once held by the murlocs. Though I do personally believe that it makes a more interesting story to think it was a brief respite for a shipwreck survivor. If we climb the cliff face on this same island around here, on your map, you will find the skeleton of a warrior leaning against a rock, gazing out over the ocean, sword at their side, and a horn stein in hand. This is complete conjecture on my part, but this scene tells me that, trapped on this island and nearing death, this warrior climbed atop these rocks to die, perhaps gazing west out over a sunset one final time. Was this the person living below under that overturned boat? I considered this, but given the state of decay on the skeleton, I would think the boat would be either completely buried or washed away at this point. But then again, that is applying real-world logic to a fantasy game, so who knows. Expectedly, given the amount of ships scuttled around Exile's Reach, several of the shipwrecks are in interesting positions or still have goods aboard. West of the abandoned camp, here on your map, you will find the wreckage of a Zandalari ship, close to where we saw that skeleton with the diver's helmet. In its hull, you will find the remains of a Triceratops and the hay it likely slept on and consumed during its journey. Honestly, I think it's very sad that it died like this. Sad, cold, alone, and drowning in a sinking ship. That's just horrible. 
If you go very, very far to the southeast, far enough that you don't even see Exile's Reach map anymore, you will find two halves of a ship broken over a large rock outcropping. Skeletons are embedded in the seabed within its front half, and cannons litter the sand outside the back. Near the rear of the ship, you will find a cave, and within it, a skeleton with a large cannonball chained to its ankle, huddled in the fetal position around the corner of this cave. Given the number of skeletons on the ship and this poor soul's proximity to it, I have to wonder if this was perhaps some sort of prisoner transport. It did also cross my mind that this man may be a reference to the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise, and specifically to bootstrap Bill Turner, who was thrown overboard the Black Pearl strapped to a cannon. That connection is loose at best, given that this skeleton is strapped to a cannonball, so this might just be a morbid easter egg an environmental designer hid for explorers to discover. Either way, it's cool. East of this cave, again off the map, you will come across the remains of an ancient elven ship, torn in half at the edge of the cliff marking the beginning of fatigue-ridden waters. The only thing really fascinating about this is that the front half of the ship appears to have achieved perfect buoyancy. Again, I recorded this on the PTR so this might change, but for now it's just floating there. Underwater. Both far to the east and far to the west, you will find two identical ships with the front half resting on the seafloor. So I assume that this first one here was supposed to be dangling off the edge of the cliff as well. But now it's documented forever. Ha! Though there are an abundance of shipwrecks through the shores and waters of Exile's Reach, there is even more cool stuff hidden underwater for us to find as well. For example, there are several large skeletons of weird, fish-like creatures littered throughout the seafloor near the continental shelf. East of the Cannonball Cave we mentioned earlier, and again too far off the map to see, we will come across the remains of a giant sea turtle with a carriage attached to its back. This is a common model used throughout World of Warcraft since vanilla, and according to a quest in Darkshore from Classic, this carriage is of Naga origin, used for transportation and during battle. Beside the turtle, you can see a sealed bottle with some reddish-orange liquid inside of it. Given the state of decay on this sea turtle, this might have been here for literally hundreds of years. Kind of horrified to think what has become of this fluid, to be honest. A second, identical Naga sea turtle can be found far to the west of Exile's Reach, complete with the same debris and even the same gross bottle. I imagine the environmental designers did not expect people to look so thoroughly in the water out here where there is literally nothing to do. So, it's all good. To the east of Exile's Reach, around here, on your map, you will find four submerged pillars. One of the four is very far away from the others, and another in the cluster has been broken by either erosion, a natural disaster, or some outside force. I feel like I've seen these pillars before, but I couldn't pin down exactly where they're from, and neither could any of my guildmates. If you have any idea, please let me know down in the comments below. We agreed that they almost looked light forged or Draenei in origin, but we couldn't be sure. Either way, if you recognize them, please let me know what they are, because I gotta know I wanna know so bad. East of the Lone Pillar, away from the others, around here, on your map, you will find two spinal segments from a massive creature, but without any sign of the rest of the creature anywhere to be seen. A spear has been stabbed into one of the vertebrae, either the cause of death of the creature or, more likely, an injury it sustained. It's also possible that the spear somehow made its way into the bone after the creature died. Regardless, the strength required to pierce such a vertebrae must have been immense. It's also terrifying to think what this may have come from. Given the size of these bones, it would have been absolutely huge. Speaking of, to the southwest of Exile's Reach around here, on your map, you can find the skeleton of another leviathan. Two massive, siege-sized spears are stuck into its ribs, and a third is lodged within its eye socket. This is presumably what killed the massive monster. But why exactly was it doing battle with a ship? Well, if you look within its ribcage, you will find the skeletons of six humans and the remains of a rowboat. Given how intact these skeletons are, they died within the stomach but were not digested. So let's paint a picture here. Clearly these six were out on the water, and were somehow consumed by the sea monster either as they were making their way to Exile's Reach or headed back to a ship offshore. A battle then ensued, with the comrades of these fallen sailors or another nearby vessel killing the beast in retribution. Real talk, this is a really cool easter egg to find and it's great environmental storytelling. Just wonderful job whoever put this in here, you done did good. Finally, in the southern Bay of Exile's Reach, here, on your map, amongst the debris from the lost cargo from one of these shipwrecks, you will find two coffins and three skeletons on the seafloor. 
Honestly, there's nothing really left to say about this other than that it's a tragic end for these souls, lost forever in the sea, so close to land. So now let's head back onto dry land and further onto the island. In the Quillbor Briar Patch, you will find the only rare spawn on the island, the Ogre Overseer, telling the Quillbor that they need to work harder because their boss needs more magic. He is difficult to miss and is not exactly a rare spawn. He will appear for every player, and it's acting more as an introduction to the concept of a rare mob for newer players than an actual rare mob on the island, but I figured that I should include him for completion's sake. Also, right next to him, it appears that some Quillbore are enjoying a nice refreshing dip in the stream. So, that's nice, and probably why the Ogre Overseer is yelling so much. Really, he's not doing a very good job also, because a ton of these Quillbore are just straight up asleep. So, yeah. Further inland, in the Dark Mall Plains, right outside the Dark Mall Citadel here, on your map, you will find a graveyard for the Ogres that have taken up residence on the island. Graves are surprisingly well tended for being ogres, but they are also absolutely gargantuan compared to the size of an average humanoid, as to be expected with bodies so large. It's a little big detail that I love, and it's nice to keep consistency in your world blizzard. Good job. All throughout the Dark Mall Plains, if you take a closer look at the critters throughout the zone, you will notice several prairie dogs gathering in suspicious ways. A few formations of them can be seen meeting in front of magical stones. To the south, you will find a cluster of prairie dogs listening to another one, perhaps plotting something nefarious. And right outside the ogre ruins, you will see one far atop this tall rock, preaching to the prairie dogs down below. What is going on here? World of Warcraft has a long history of including these weird little animal gatherings and I, I love it. Additionally, outside of the ogre ruins close to that preaching prairie dog, you will find the skeletons of several poor souls either forced into labor, combat, or sacrifice. However, what we want to focus on is here, right outside of the tower. One of the skeletons is clutching a large metal ball attached to a chain, crushing its pelvis. This looks like an incredibly painful way to die, I gotta be real. I just hope it wasn't dropped on- oh, jeez, that would really suck. To the southeast of the Ogre Ruins, here, on your map, you will find the remains of a small temple near the Harpy Roost. On the ledge, overlooking the plains, you will find a dragon skull perched upon the balcony. It's not hidden, so to say, but it is out of the way and you may not notice it even if you go exploring. It also hints at the storyline featured later in the zone. If one heads north up the river outside the Ogre Ruins, around here, on your map, you can find a submerged cavern at the base of a large waterfall. Within you will find the skeleton of a thresher, as well as several Tortalons that are hiding out while the ogres play out their plans. They have stockpiled supplies, as well as toys like these wind-up alliance and horde ships for their children. You can talk to the main Tortalon to quickly be sent back to your faction's camp at the Ogre Ruins. Just like the Eden earlier, this is a cool easter egg, as well as a nice way to reward explorers with a quick way back to the beaten path. Just inside of the Harpy's Roost, around here on your map, you will see a fallen tree creating somewhat of a makeshift archway. You can actually make your way around to the base of this fallen tree, where you can walk up its hollowed out tree trunk. At its zenith, you will find a baby in a nest, inside of a jerry-rigged cradle made from two halves of an eggshell. Two birds keep vigil over the child. It's not clear if this is a harpy or a child that they kidnapped. Some of the mobs in this area are called harpy snatchers, so I wouldn't be surprised. But if that is the case, where did this baby come from, and why is no one concerned about rescuing it? During the main quest line for the area, you will be disguised as an ogre and sent to infiltrate the Dark Mall Citadel. You will be told to go to an area where ogre chefs are preparing food. The quest also tells you that you can type slash dance, and if you do, the other ogres will dance with you, much to the chagrin of your allies. Recruit, I think you're taking the ogre act a little too far. This isn't exactly a secret, I just think it's really, really funny. If you stick around for a moment, one of the ogres will say that he is making food that will be off the hook, and that he wants to take people to the flavor place. This is a clear reference to celebrity chef Guy Fieri, and his catchphrase is off the chain, and I'm gonna take you to Flavortown. And finally, a bit closer to the Citadel yourself, here, on your map, you will come across a bridge connecting the grounds to the gates of the main castle. If you swim under this bridge, however, you will find the skeleton of both a fisherman and a large fish, who has grabbed onto the head of said fisherman. The conflict unfortunately left them both dead, left here forever under this masonry work. In the words of a wise man, there's always a bigger fish. 
And there we are. It's every Easter egg or environmental secret I could find in Exile's Reach. As I've already mentioned, I explored this island on the PTR before Shadowlands went live. And while I tried to be as thorough as I could, I am sure there are things that I missed. Or maybe some things that have been added after I recorded this footage. So if you find anything or know of something that I did miss, please let me know down in the comments below. And hey, while you're down there, let me know what area you want me to explore next. I'm pretty sure it's going to be Teldrassil or Dunmoreau, but that could change if I get enough requests. If you want to see more Warcraft trivia right now, check out the videos I did exploring the secrets and easter eggs of Elwyn Forest and Duratar. I'd love to do videos like this for all of the zones in World of Warcraft, and maybe in some other games like Skyrim and The Witcher and even Cyberpunk just to name a couple. So please subscribe and ring the bell so you don't miss out on any of that. As always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.